are rocket scientists. Our laboratory is the road. Our mission is to explore the outer limits of power and control, which explains how we dreamt up a 227 horsepower turbocharged boxer engine molded to a cylindrical all-wheel drive system. We've taken performance to a world that's never been before. The Subaru WRX. We have ignition. The new Subaru. When you hear the word Subaru WRX, three things probably come to mind. One is rallying. Eh, maybe. Two, tuning. Perhaps. But three, and the most important one, vaping. But I like to think about it as a car that helps change the car industry to the way it is now. In 1993, the Subaru World Rally team ditched the heavier legacy platform and switched to the Impreza platform. They were sponsored by State Express 555 Tobacco Company, which repped the gold and blue coloring. The gold and blue color scheme would soon become the signature color of every WRX, but we will get to that. Unfortunately not for us North Americans, but the Impreza within the Japanese markets was being sold with an option with a turbocharged engine called the WRX. This generation had an EJ20 engine, 237 horsepower, 224 foot-pounds of torque, equipped with a 5-speed manual and had a 2600 curb weight, which is a pretty crazy power to weight ratio. This generation also had a package called Type RA that was the extremist version. It basically just had no AC, no power options and some extra goodies. Colin McRae then went on to win many rally championships, which really helped boost the popularity of the WRX in the Impreza and made us North Americans salivate at the mouth. In 1994, they released the first WRX STI, which had forged pistons, upgraded intercooler, carbon fiber strut towers, and 256 horsepower. This model also sprung the blessed, the amazing Subaru WRX STI 22B. It was made to celebrate Colin McRae's three championships as well as the Subaru 40th anniversary. It boasted an range of goodies. It made 276 horsepower, 268 torque, and it only reportedly 424 were manufactured. And because of that, they are selling an auction for over $100,000. One car dealership actually has one listed for over 150000 Completely absurd, but also really amazing. The year is 2002. Just two years prior, everyone thought the world was going to end. MTV had just premiered the Osbournes. Eminem won a rap battle. YouTuber Jacob Satorius was born. So as you can tell, America, we all needed something to rally behind. Literally. Because in 2002, we in America received our first WRX, which was the Bug Eye Generation. The Bug Eye WRX made 227 horsepower, 217 foot-pounds of torque. It came with a five-speed manual and had a curb weight of 3,085 pounds. The thing about the WRX, or just the Bug Eye in general, is that it outperformed so many cars above or around its own class. With the zero to 60 of 5.6 seconds, it was outclassing other cars like an Audi S4, Mustang GT, cars that it just shouldn't have been able to outperform for a fraction of the cost. In 2004, Subaru decided to give the WRX a facelift, which is now known as the Blob Eye. Some of the major differences being the rear tail lights, the front bumper, and some interior bits. That is not all though, because the Blob Eye generation also came with an STI option. The Blob Eye STI had 300 horsepower, 300 foot pounds of torque, quite a bit more than obviously just the WRX platform, but it did also have a 3300 curb weight, which is 200 pounds heavier. From 2001 all the way up till 2007 was still considered the second generation WRX. Between the Bug Eye and Blob Eye, this does make sense because the only major changes were exterior and interior bits, but whereas the Hawkeye, there was some major differences. 
The Hawkeye platform ditched the EJ205 and introduced the EJ255 that ran from 2006 all the way up to 2008. It made 224 horsepower, 226 foot pounds of torque, it had a 5 speed manual, and had a curb weight of 3,192 pounds. With the Hawkeye generation coming to an end, people were very excited to what comes next. But then it happened. The biggest market crash the world has seen since the Great Depression. And what did that mean for Subaru? Well, it meant the blunder year. Subaru followed up on the legendary Hawkeye WRX with the Stink Eye WRX. It's not that the 2008 WRX was a bad car by any means, but in terms of Subaru standards and going from the Bug Eye, Blob Eye, Hawkeye and going into this generation, it really shocked a lot of fans. This generation went away from the more car enthusiast focused platform and went more into a car that could do everything. Someone regular would buy this car and still enjoy it, whereas the obviously the more niche market, the more of the car enthusiast would still buy this car and appreciate it. Except, did people enjoy it? No, because the 2008 WRX saw a lot of backlash from the community and forced them to make huge improvements for the 2009 WRX model. Even though the car community was a bit upset that they shifted away from more of that pure driver oriented experience, they did compensate because it received a large power upgrade making 265 horsepower, 244 foot pounds of torque with a curb weight of 3,229 pounds. And then in 2012, they did another refresh, and in my opinion, they made it look like more of a car enthusiast car, changing the front bumper, changing up the rear taillights, and adding a way more aggressive stance, starting with the fenders. And the fact that the 2012 model did not receive huge changes really means a lot more than it sounds. In the past generation with the Bug Eye Blob by Hawkeye, Subaru was making huge changes to obviously invoke more sales. Whereas for the Stink Eye generation, longevity was more of their goal and they were way more confident with their platform. And this type of business strategy definitely translated to the newest generation because the newest generation hasn't seen any major change in the five years that it's ran. So here we are, the newest generation. It's been a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. The 2015 WRX ditched the EJ platform and introduced the FA platform. The 2015 WRX put down 268 horsepower, 258 foot-pounds of torque, and had a 3,267-pound curb weight. It is also the first WRX generation to offer a six-speed manual. So, now that we're five years into this generation of the WRX, we can only expect a new one to be coming out just around the corner. It's going to be really interesting to see what they do, especially with the STI, considering, you know, the STI really hasn't changed very much. I mean the body style, sure, but the platform itself has a lot of longevity and therefore it really hasn't changed like the WRX platform has changed in the past two decades. It'd be really interesting to see if they actually switch over to like the FA platform and if we see the power numbers go up. I know Subaru really counts on us knowing that we're going to tune our vehicles anyways, which is why they're not too concerned with the actual power numbers, but definitely very interesting to see what they do. <sighs> there we have it guys. There is my breakdown on every single WRX generation. So let's get into it. What do I think? Which WRX generation do I like the most? And it's pretty simple guys. And I'm sure if you watch my channel, you would know that I owned a blob by WRX. A blob by WRX that I loved, but also hated with a passion. <laughs> my blob by WRX, obviously the engine exploded a hundred kilometers after I purchased it. And so I had to go down a big road of rebuilds and just headaches on a limited budget. With that being said, I am in love with kind of the older body styles, the Bug Eye, Blob Eye, and obviously Hawkeye. And so my favorite generation is actually the Hawkeye generation. I think it is the best generation because it still retains, you know, it's more rally, lightweight, pure performance car status. Besides the 2008 WRX, I think it's kind of that blunder year. I actually think that every single generation of the WRX is a fantastic car. There's a reason why it's so popular globally. But again, my favorite WRX is the Hawkeye WRX. It retains the heart of that rally car that Colin McRae drove. But anyways guys, that is just my opinion. Definitely let me know down below. In no means am I really being objective about that. I This is completely subjective. I just like the Hawkeye the most, especially the Hawkeye hatchback. 
Before buying my GTI, I was this close, this close to buying one. So it's definitely a car that I want to own one day. But anyways guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to make. I've just been receiving a lot of great reception on my what is the best Civic Si generation video. It's been randomly just getting a lot of views and I really appreciate all the support guys. You guys single-handedly motivated me to create this video that you're seeing today. These videos take a lot of effort, a lot of research, a lot of time to make. So if I do make them, I appreciate the support so much guys. I mean, I can't say it enough. I have a blast making them and I hope you guys enjoy it. But anyways guys, thank you guys so much for all the support. I think I've gained a couple hundred subscribers in the past couple weeks. So welcome to the channel. A lot more content to come out. And also, I guess one thing to mention is I had a video called, a, a previous video called What is the Best Ever X Generation? I'm not associating that video with this type of video series. I'm actually going to start going down a line where I kind of analyze every single major car, whether that's Evo, whether that's GTI, and give my opinion as well as the background on that specific car. So definitely stay tuned for that, guys. Having a blast making these videos. See you guys later.